everyone, it's the Eclectic Candyman here today on my Shelby GT500 KR. Going to talk about how to clean and maintenance the reusable air filter. Now, that doesn't matter if you've got a Mustang or a Shelby or honestly any car that has a reusable lifetime filter. And that's the important part is the lifetime. These are made to be clean and re-oiled. But some of the things that you have to determine before you do this project is maybe you just want to buy a brand new filter. Some of them only cost about the price of a tank of gas or a little bit more. So some people opt not to re-oil the filter, to go for an oilless filter. It depends on your application. The more difficult it is to find the exact filter, uh, especially in these scenarios, these are made to, again, clean and re-oil. So in my case, I'm not going to replace it. I will show you this process. Let's see how easy it is to do. So there's a mileage interval that you can go by to clean these filters, but honestly, just looking at it, as you can see closely, this one is just really saturated. And I can tell it's affecting performance. Some dusty roads near where I live, a lot of trucks, and that really causes this filter to get uh, a very dirty, so it needs to be maintenanced right away. All right, so today on my reusable filter, even though it's not made by K&N, I am going to use their products to help in the process. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the air filter cleaner and the air filter oil. This is what most people are concerned about, and you're right, I've done this a bunch on different cars. The problem is, is that if you put too much oil on your filter, it will get on the mass airflow sensor, it can get up in the throttle body, and it can be problematic. That's why a lot of people don't want to re-oil the filter. They just opt for a factory fresh reusable filter, but they don't actually reuse it. Depending on what you want to do, you can do that, but I'm going to use the aid of this. But I tell you right now, I will be using this sparingly, just barely enough. I do not want this stuff getting on the internal components and messing things up. So let's go ahead and get that filter off and get started. It's usually very straightforward to take these things off. You just... This one's an eight millimeter. It's got this retaining ring on it. It's like a massive version of one that you might find on a radiator hose. So just get that loosened up that we can remove the filter. And then you should just be able to pull it right off. All right, let's move on to cleaning this up. All right, so now what we've got is just a bucket of plain soap and warm water. And we're gonna use that to clean the filter. So I'm going to take this k and air filter cleaner here. I'm just going to spray this on the outside to kind of help get some of that grime off. If you don't have this, don't worry about this step because really the soap and water will do just fine on these reusable filters. So I'm putting some of that on. Now I'm only doing it on the outside. Remember that air is pulled in through the filter like this. So all the grime is on the outside. We don't want anything getting embedded from the inside. That would then get sucked into the intake. So you're working primarily by getting this grime off from the outside. Let's go ahead and put that in the bucket of water and you can see immediately this water turned brown. It's disgusting. So that really already is starting to get this clean. Oh my goodness, look at that water. I should have done this actually quite some time ago. If you want to, with a gentle hose, you can spray, but always spray from the inside out. Do not spray in, that will embed that dirt. So if you wanna use like a gentle spray, you can pour, you can see that, you see how it's coming out from the outside. That way, we are not further embedding any dirt. This is really dirty. Shame on me for waiting so long on this process. Again, that's why the mileage doesn't matter. You have to judge the cleanliness of your filter based on how physically dirty it looks. We've got this pretty decent. Again, you can just kind of go down there. If you needed to, you could use like a little brush if there's anything, you know, super embedded in that. But I just want to get all of that out. So I'm just dunking it into there. One note as well on the filter, I did do the cleaning process in the bucket three different times. It was so dirty. I changed the water, put new soap into it, and just did the process three different times. Make sure you do the same thing until everything is clear and you don't have any more dirt coming out. And then I'll give it one final rinse. 
from the inside going out. Once that water is clear, we're going to let it air dry. And this is the part some folks may try to rush, and you don't want to do that. You do not want to use any kind of compressed air or anything. What we really want to do is just find a space to air dry outside for probably 12 to 24 hours, which I know you're saying, I need this clean in two hours, but you can't accelerate this process. So plan ahead if you need that extra time that you're going to take about a day to do this right, because we are not going to oil this filter and re-oil it till it is 100% dry. And again, don't try to accelerate that by using an air blower or something. You can damage the pleats here and we don't want to do that. So be very careful. These can get bent. You want to try to avoid that. Let's go ahead, leave this outside and pick this back up after this has had ample time to dry. A few moments later. All right, so I let that dry overnight for at least 24 hours. You could tell when it's completely air dried, there's no moisture left in it. So now it's time to re-oil it. So I'm going to use that Canon air filter oil and I'm going to use this sparingly. This is the part that you can really mess stuff up. I've done that before and used way too much oil because I was like, wow, it's red. It looks great, but it's dripping. And then that ends up getting on the mass airflow, the throttle body. And one time I took the upper end take off my old Cobra and it was just filthy. And it's from this stuff right here. So I'm going to use this again sparingly on the different pleats and then also let this dry for many hours before I actually start the car up with it in. So let's go ahead and do that process now. And again, you can just go row by row, kind of off like, you know, about six to eight inches away. And again, I'm going to be very careful not to over oil this. The reality is, depending on where you live and how dirty the filter gets, it's better just to do this process, you know, every six months if you're driving on dirt roads, than to over oil it because you want it to last, you know, for years and years. All right. I will wipe off the extra that's on the top and bottom of the filter. But again, I don't want to overdo it. Just kind of get any spots I didn't get. And then we'll let this dry before reinstallation. There we go. Also, some people may not actually want to oil the filter. The purpose of the oil is to help trap debris before it gets into the filter. So it doesn't get obviously sucked into the engine. It helps with those properties. So oiling it is part of the design of the air filter element on these reusable filters. Again, can't say enough. You just don't want to oversaturate it because as long as this side, and you do not oil the inside, you only oil the outside pleats. And then again, let that completely dry. Much, much, much later. Okay, so I let this dry overnight. It's been about 24 hours. And the key to knowing success is that you don't see any of the oil on the inside, only on the outside. Now, if you got a little bit on the rim or on the bottom and want to clean it off, just use a little rag and some simple green to get off any extra that might be around it. The other thing that I want to do is if you've ever seen a greasy pizza before, and you take a napkin or a towel to it, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Even though it's dried, I wanna go ahead on the pleats, and you see that right there? I don't need that extra. So what's dried is dry in the pleats. That's what we need, but we don't need all this extra on there. Again, this is why some people opt not to re-oil, because it, as I've mentioned, it's a delicate balance. But go ahead and just, like I said, like a greasy pizza, just get off the extra. I'm not wiping it off. I'm just patting anything that may have had residual that sat on the top. And you saw how little I used in the process. So this can quickly get out of hand if you keep spraying over and over the pleats. We need just enough to do the job. All right. So I'll do that with one more paper towel 
Again, I don't want to soak up everything. I just want to get the extra and let's go put it back on the car. All right, installation on your specific application is just the reverse. Good time as well to clean this up again with some simple green or something to make sure none of this gets sucked up into the engine. Put this back on, make sure the retaining ring is also on. And no rhyme or reason to this, just don't over torque this. You don't want any leaks, but at the same time, don't overdo it. All right, there we have it. We are all done. The process is complete. I do think patience is of importance here. Don't rush when it dries after you clean it. Don't rush after you've oiled it and you're putting it back on the car. Give yourself some time. If you are a Shelby owner or a Mustang owner that doesn't drive in the winter, it's a perfect time to do it. Otherwise, maybe a couple days when you know you're not going to drive the car. But this will help improve performance, obviously. And you will save a lot of money because these are meant to be reused. Just don't abuse the amount of oil that you put in here. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, this is the Eclectic Candyman. We'll see you later.